What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Michael Mar Show. Today is Monday, February 1st, 2021. This is episode 44, and I am joined by Bucknell point guard Miles Latimer. We go back. We actually played AAU basketball together back in the day. We want to say what's up to everyone, big man? What's up, everybody? It's a pleasure to be on. I'm really yeah. yeah, I had to get you on. I was just going through... Um, you know, just like old pictures on my on my old laptop a couple weeks ago, and I came across ones of Flex, and I was like, dude, I got to interview Miles. I was like, that'd be a great episode. Yeah. But, um, yeah, let's start right off the bat with the Wizards. They beat the Nets last night. Did you watch that game? Yeah, like, like uh, just like bits and pieces, like highlights and stuff. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's crazy because I'd be like – because everyone was thinking the Nets were going to be, like, super tough. But I knew I knew it's gonna be that that little that little period where where they have to figure it out because that's just that that's just so much talent in one team. Yeah, and especially because they're all like ball dominant players that like there's only one basketball. So I mean, exactly, and also like Steve Nash is a first year head coach. Yeah, so that 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 has to do with it too. So I just like, think it's a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, I just think it's crazy that the Wizards have four wins and two of them are against the best team in the in the Eastern Conference. Yeah. I don't know why that trips me out so much, but it does. Um, bro, I'm, I can, I can speak from experience. Like when you play against some bad teams, sometimes it's really hard to like, to like, like get Turn up. Yourself, like, like mentally there. So yeah. like you can just, you, you think you can shortcut things, and then next thing you know, you have a close game, and you're like, oh god, and yeah. then so, and it's a whole, it's a whole process. So I mean, like I, I can understand how how the uh, Nets can just. Play like, down to our level. Yeah. Yeah, it happens, especially when you're playing, like, 80-some games, however many games they play. Like, it's kind of hard to turn up every single night and, like, have that fire, like you said. Yeah, and especially, like, from from being at this level of basketball now, like, I've, like, worked out with guys, like, uh, that are in the NBA. And, like, here and there, like, their stories of, like, how the NBA is, like, it's a grueling process, like, having to travel and just, like, hearing all about it. Like, yeah. some of some of your favorite NBA players, like, be tired. Like, they, they – they're they're tired like they don't want to do it so like it's it's rough it's tough so like it's it's hard to like get yourself like to be mentally there every day it's hard yeah. to pause, like. i can imagine it's even harder now with like covid and like all the protocols you have to follow and all that stuff yeah. it just makes it like that much more challenging but yeah. uh i think it was like a week and a half ago james harden signed with the nets now what do you think about that i mean we just said that there's only one basketball to go around but like in the long term do you think that's going to work out for them or you think it's going to be a, another bad scenario uh I don't know. I think, I think with like James Harden's ability to like to make plays, I think I think if he is able to like fully be unselfish and like and let KD or Kyrie um, have to lash out, maybe I don't yeah. know. But like it could be different because um, I always think about uh, when it was like the last year that KD, Russ, and um, James Harden were all together. Mm-hmm. Um, like all three of them would like all three of them would have like twenty five plus. So like they like finally started to figure it out. So I feel yeah. like that just like that that could probably be like next season, maybe the end of this season, where like they all three could figure it out. Yeah, Dude, that's why I love the NBA because like every single off season, there's some crazy trades, and the whole landscape of the league is just turned on its axis. So yeah. it's it's definitely I'd say it's the most exciting sport to watch as far as like just action and just like off court like stuff that goes yeah. on as far as trades and everything, but so you're a Wizards fan. What do you think about Russell? Would you have rather traded uh, John Wall for Russell or Beal to another team and potentially not gotten Russell? I don't, I've, I've, I've been going back and forth because like, I just don't love Russ as a player uh-huh. because I just think that like, he's, he's so talented, but he's just too inefficient. So yeah. I think that, I think that like, just as him being your secondary option to Bradley Beal is just, I don't, I don't think that's a very good combo. Yeah. Especially in the East because the East is strong this year. Yeah. I feel like it's just more of the same too. I mean, like John Wall and Russell have like such a similar play style. The thing that just bugs me the most is like as a Wizards fan, like I don't care if you get a triple double every night. I don't care how many points you score. Like as long as we get a win at the end of the night, exactly. but, but we don't, I mean, we're like four and 12 to start the season or something. I don't know. It's kind of upsetting. Yeah. Dude, I would, just, I would love DC to get like a, like a superstar. I don't know why. I don't know I if that's know. ever gonna happen. But I, I would love it. I, it's just because we're not a big market and we haven't been good. Yeah. So like our, our best chance was if Kevin Durant would have came home in like 20, 20, that was seventeen when yeah. he when he uh, when he um, when he went to the Golden State Warriors. Yeah, if he would have came here, like that maybe would have caused someone to come here. But 
I don't think it ever happened anytime soon. Dude, I was so hopeful that when, when, when he was a free agent and I remember, I think he like visited Washington or met with our front office or something. I was over yeah. the moon. Yeah, there was like, a whole thing about like he, he might sign with Under Armour too because they were said that like Nike, Nike didn't want to give him like a full, full max on his shoe contract or something. Mm-hmm. So they were saying how um, uh, Under Armour is in Maryland. Like it's like, it's like 20 minutes away, like, like yeah. right from like where he grew up and it was like hometown. So they were saying that like he could all come back home. There was like some it all seemed too good to be true, bro. It all seemed way too good to be true. <laughs> yeah, real quick, uh, what's your favorite pair of shoes to rock when you play basketball? I mean, this wasn't on the outline, but just like talking about Under Armour and Nike and those endorsement deals. Uh, I'm Adidas now. And honestly, Adidas is a lot better than like what I thought they were. Mm-hmm. Uh, Comfort-wise, like Adidas really do be comfortable. Uh, they run a little bit bigger than Nike's just for me. Um, I've like I've, I've noticed that. But uh, Nike's, I'm trying to see if I have a pair, like right here or something. The Nike, like Nikes will always be my favorite just because like just because of their like clout, I guess you would yeah. say. But like I think that like Nike has is just like the best style of the shoe. You know, kind of see if I can have it. Oh like right here. Sorry. No, you're good, dude. I'll see him. Go oh. Like uh like my KD sixes on pearls. Yeah, those are fresh. Those are fresh, dude. Love these. Um I have some I have like my favorite pair of Kobe's to wear. The um they're called like the uh KD. Sorry, the Kobe uh, AD NXT 360s. Uh-huh. Um, they're like they're like a low top, and like they have the they, they have this thing called like a drop in midsole. So like if you take the midsole out, um, you can kind of like bend the shoe, like like the bend, like 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 the shoe is kind of like a sock. So like the yeah. midsole is like all is like all of your like support and stuff. So yeah. like as soon as you start playing, like it literally feels like there's nothing on your foot. Like it's crazy. What is uh is Bucknell? Are they Nike? Are you guys Nike? Uh, no, uh, Bucknell is Adidas. Adidas. Oh, okay. So that's why you were just saying that you rock Adidas. Yeah. yeah I, I remember I used to just only wear Nike back in the day. I don't know why. Like you said, it was just for the clout. I mean, it wasn't really like going for comfort. It was kind of just what, what looked the hottest. Yeah, no, no. Everybody had everybody, um, had those Nike Elite socks too, bro. Like, yeah, dude. We was hooping, bro. Everybody had those. It was all yeah, dude. You pull them up as high as you could possibly as get them to. Bro, bro, you remember we would sock people? You, you used to yeah, like, you just run up behind all them. the way down to the... <laughs> Dude, those things bro, came in the, every color, straight up in like the the, the, the patterns and everything. The neons. Bro, I can't lie, they were comfortable. They were comfortable bro, as hell, dude. Bro, bro, they were tough. Bro, they were they were getting money out of all of us. Like, <laughs> yeah, for sure. There, bro, I used to be like, "Mom, please." I, I know. Probably go to Dicks or something. I remember that. Yeah, dude, we used to run up checks at Dicks just on elite socks. Just on elites. Just on them. Okay, uh, another uh, sport or NBA question I got for you is uh, what is your finals prediction for this year? I know we're kind of far out and there's a lot of games left to be played, but what are you feeling? I think the Lakers are going to come out of the West again. Yeah. Just like they're just they're just looking so just solid. They're just looking so solid. And they're just yeah. and they've also just went through it last year. So even though that they have a little bit different of, of a team, like they're still very experienced. Yeah. And the chemistry is just man. Out of the East, I think the East is such a big question. Mm-hmm. It's, like, it's just such a big question because, like, the Sixers are looking really good because now that they have Doc Rivers, like, they, I don't know, they just look just like they they look like they finally had like that one missing piece that like kind of like helped them get over the edge, and it was Doc Rivers. Like that's what it was. Like, and so like the Sixers are looking really good, but I don't know. Man. I just don't know. I don't know. Because like who knows? Because who knows if the uh, if the Nets will figure it out? Like I think if the Nets will figure it out, I think they have a really good shot. But I think it'll either be, I, th- I think it'll either be Philly or I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm thinking Philly or Brooklyn as well. If that's what you're gonna say, I, yeah. I think I'm, I'm thinking either Philly or Brooklyn. I yeah. Think. And who do you think? Yeah. My, no, no, my no, bad. No, I was gonna say who do you think the Lakers are gonna have to play in the Western Conference Finals? <sighs> if it even matters. <laughs> I don't even think it matters to be honest. I think that I, I, think, I, so. I think they're going to get out of the West because I don't like. I don't think the Clippers could. Like I don't think in a playoff series that the Clippers can beat them. Yeah, I mean they couldn't last year. Like you said, the the chemistry is just improving for the Lakers after last season. Yeah. They yeah. already did it once. So yeah, Bron just Bron just keeps on staying the same. Like, he's just, I, which makes no sense to me. I mean, like he's like thirty six or thirty seven. He's still like he's, at just, the, he's a genetic freak. Bro. He's, I. Like we always be talking about this. Like, there's always like there, there, there's levels to basketball, man. Like, there's like there's the elite of the elite, and then there's the elite of the elite of the elite. Like, he is yeah. just 
he's just so far beyond everybody. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Like, we, 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 we really don't appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, he's just, he good. puts so much care into his body that like, that's literally like the only reason he oh, can keep million going dollars a year on his body alone. Like that is crazy. Yeah, dude. And he was doing that stuff like before it was cool. Like, I mean, I'm assuming he's probably been taking care of his body since he was like 20, oh, 21. For sure. for sure. When back when nobody was caring about, him, I know for a fact. He was. Yeah, dude. I want to see him play with his son so badly. That would be so that that'd be the coolest thing. That would yeah. really be the coolest thing. Yeah, I, I think Ronnie gets there first. Let's be honest. Let's see I know he here. does have yeah, that's the only thing is like the pressure on this kid is just like and he didn't ask for any of it. I mean, but like having the name like LeBron James Jr., it's like you just got that target on your back, like without even doing nothing. Yeah, hundred percent. So and yeah, especially with his team last year, he had he had a lot of known names in the uh, social media world on basketball. Mm-hmm. So his, all of his games were getting coverage and stuff like that. So it's probably it's actually pretty good for him this year that like there's COVID and there's a little bit of a downtime. Yeah. Now who's the who's the best player that you've played against so far in your basketball career? There's a whole lot of names because of PBI because we we played everybody. Yeah, a lot of people in the I, league. I would say I would say the best person I had to guard. There's oh man, I'll say that I had to guard for like an extended period of time. I'll mm-hmm. say, I'll say Cam Reddish. Damn, Colin Sexton. What? Um, who else gave me buckets? <laughs> trying to think dude colin sexton that's the name right there yeah we played him my junior year of high school yeah my my junior year his senior year we played him yeah and for people that don't know that are listening he went on to play at alabama and then now he's still in the Cavs, right yeah yeah cavaliers uh, yeah he's having a pretty good season so far yeah did he talk a lot to you he didn't like he didn't really like talk to me he like talked like to the crowd and to and like to himself like it was like i can't even describe it like he would just like he would like make a play then he would like be talking but it'd be all to himself yeah but he'd be like talking around and i'm just like I was that's like, crazy so he was a senior when you were a junior yeah was that game at paul the sixth no it was uh it was at damasco it was for the uh it was for the national hoop fest um it's like a, it's like an event that happens every year that um most of us like DC teams get to play like other teams that want to come to DC and play. So Dang. like um, Cam Reddish uh, was there. Um, Anthony Edwards played uh, played there. Um, trying to think, we played we played against um, a whole bunch. Like my sophomore year, we played against API. They had like Trayvon Duvall, Billy Preston. Damn, bro, Ferguson. these are names. Yeah, like Terrence Ferguson. Bro, my freshman year. PBI played absolutely everybody. Ben Simmons, Dwayne Bacon, Jalen Brown. Um, oh, Markel Fultz was in our high school conference. Damn. Yeah. Did, yeah. Where did he go? I, mean, I actually remember uh, hearing that uh, he went, like, uh, little... he went to DeMatha. DeMatha, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I've played all, I've played a lot of these guys in high school and like AAU. I'm trying to think of some names like Javante Smart, Darius Garland. Damn, man. You've been playing, you played against some names in your young career and yeah, it just started. Man. Yeah, I've that's high. A whole bunch of yeah, it's high. It's once you get to like, like level of like PBI, like where you start playing in like in, in like private school leagues, um, you really start to just meet like a, a lot of those high like high high level guys. Um, like I was just I was just very fortunate to play um, in the EYBO. Uh, yeah. Go to like the uh, get to go to like the uh, what's it called the uh, the uh, Victor Oladipo camp. Um, I got to go to that, get some exposure. I got to play with people like uh, Taylor Horton Tucker. He's on the Lakers now. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, I got, got to play with a whole bunch of people and meet, meet a whole bunch of people through that. That's so exciting. And when you were when you were at Paul the Sixth, you got weren't you guys like highly ranked in the country? Like, what was your ranking? Yeah, um, my our senior year, I think we finished like fifth in the country, something like that. Something. Damn, bro. That's so impressive. I wish I had gone to one of your games so badly because, I mean, you're like 20 minutes from my house. But the only game that I've been to that was like similar to that was I went to uh, DeMatha Gonzaga my senior year of high school at DeMatha. And I just being in that environment, I was like, yeah. dude, I wish I went to a school where every game was like this. Bro, that's how like all of our games against against DeMatha, Gonzaga, St. John's and O'Connell because O'Connell's our rival. 
like yeah. every single game we had like that were absolutely packed like every yeah, that's single so one hype. was just like it was, and it's, it's crazy like seeing like getting used to that environment and then mm-hmm. um playing at like lower level colleges where you don't see that atmosphere as much like it's crazy to experience both of them yeah now how was the 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 process of choosing to go to Paul six like were you recruited there or did you make a decision in middle school yeah. you want to go there yeah so um we um you, you probably remember when when we were like in like seventh grade we all we had those tournaments at pvi yeah and then so like they they saw me play at those tournaments and then they just talked to my parents and asked me if i wanted to come uh-huh. and then, um, i like shadowed there one day when i was in eighth grade um and i was like yeah like i like it and then so um yeah, just got the whole process done. And That's like I had to go to PBI. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah, I had a choice. It was either I was going to go to Rockridge for my freshman year, and then and then go to PBI, or I was going to go to PBI for all four years. And I was just like, no, I'll, I'll just go to PBI for all four years. Yeah. How are the other sports at PBI? Uh, football is getting better. Uh, it's football mostly just basketball. Trash. Football used to be trash at PBI. Yeah. <laughs> but, is it? Um, uh, the the men's lacrosse team. I know my senior year beat Gonzaga for the first time, and like Gonzaga is always like top ten in the country. Mm-hmm. So like we were like top fifteen, I think something like that. So like men's lacrosse was really good. I hear I hear baseball is really, baseball is always really good. Like we're always really competitive in all of our sports. Yeah, but basketball is just like takes the cake though. Yeah, it's just like basketball is just like the most. Yeah, sport. respect. All right. Um, real quick before I get into your NBA starting five, I'm just gonna touch upon the Super Bowl this weekend. Uh, Chiefs versus Buccaneers. Chiefs are going for the back-to-back. The game is in Tampa Bay, so the Buccaneers have a home game. Brady's going for his seventh title, which is just honestly crazy to even like hear myself say. And um, just real quick, what's your prediction? I mean, you told me off camera that you don't watch football that much, but uh, if you just had to guess, who do you think is going to win? I don't know. I feel like I feel like I have to go with the Chiefs. Yeah, I, just have, I have to go with the Chiefs, not because like. I've just seen the way that they play, and, and and they just seem like they're just such a solid team. Like, like, yeah, like uh, they just like they, they just don't make that many mistakes. I just think, and then also having Patrick Mahomes as your quarterback is just yeah, dude. I, and they just like they overcome adversity like no other team I've seen. Actually, it feels like every game that they're in, they're down by twenty, but then they'll end up winning by fifteen. It's just betting against Brady, dude. It's one of those things. It's like I know, I know. betting against Brady. It's, 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 it, 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 it's crazy though because I, I I remember watching the Super Bowl that happened in, like, 2008 when they uh, when they uh, lost the uh, perfect season. When they oh, lost with the Giants? Yeah, but, yeah, I guess the Giants. Like, I remember watching that game, and it's crazy that I'm 20 years old and I'm about to watch it in the Super Bowl again. Yeah. Dude, I saw a stat the other day that said that he's played in uh, 14 – like, he's he's been in the league for, like, 20 seasons, and 14 of the 20 seasons he's played in the conference championship game, which is just, like, I don't even know what to say about that. It's actually crazy. It's a winner, man. Yeah, for sure. Wherever he goes, he, he apparently dubs. But all right, um, back to basketball real quick. What is your all-time NBA starting five? And you don't have to go position by position, but if you want to, you can, or you can just name five players straight up that you'd want to rock with in a pickup game. See, the one thing that, like, I don't know because the one thing that's different is just because of the different eras of basketball. Uh-huh. Because basketball now is so different than how it was before, and like I know because like in in our in our offense that we use now at Bucknell, it's like a very old school style of offense. Mm-hmm. And so like I and I've also played in a very new style of offense as well, like where we basically just have like five guards out there. And so, I it's hard to like say with like playing style, but I think like. Of all time five, I would say, man, this is a tough question. <laughs> this is a tough question. I would say Steve Nash at the one. All right. Um, MJ at the two, and then. I'd go Braun at the three, KD at the four, and then I'd go like who would I go for my phones? I don't like I don't know if, if I want like a real post presence or if I want like someone who can like stretch out the floor. I don't know. I don't know what I want. 
or or I could just be like the Warriors and just have some five that's just gonna just, just be for me. dominates everywhere. Yeah, I don't know. To like build a perfect team, like I guess I would have like a stretch five big. So I'd I'd pick like Dirk. Dirk, that's a solid team. So you got Nash, Jordan, James, Durant, and Dirk. And that's not like all time list or anything. Like I'm not trying to disrespect older players. I'm just saying like yeah. From, from like a space in the floor out, like how if I was a coach, how how I would want my game to be played. I would just yeah. have Braun at the high post, give it to him, and then just like and then just like have off just have off ball movement cutters and just try and find something. Okay, that team would be feeding. And Nash would maybe get thirty seven assists a game. Yeah. And then plus like if we needed a bucket, we can just give it to Jordan and have him and have him mid post ISO. Yeah, dude, I, I'm so happy you said Dirk because I feel like he just gets like not as much. Lo- like, obviously, he, he's well respected, but I feel like if he hadn't gotten that championship against the Heat like ten years oh, ago, I, yeah, he would be very disrespected. If he yeah, I, yeah. Sometimes I just hate how like guys are just like not given credit because they don't win a championship, and like obviously like that that helps your resume, but for for a lot of his career he he wasn't surrounded by like that many good pieces but i mean yeah and he like he he never left dallas he always stayed in dallas like, he, didn't, yeah. he didn't chase rings or he didn't he didn't chase winning he always wanted to stay stay true and stay loyal and, like it's hard because like your team's gonna go through fuck like your team's gonna go up and down especially with parts moving coaches changing yeah uh, front office changes a whole bunch of changes so but that, but that loyalty shows, and that's why, like, that's why people love Dirk. Yeah, did that his whole career, dude. Loyalty over everything. Like, same with Kobe sticking with the Lakers and um, Tim Duncan with the Spurs. Tim Duncan, uh, Damian Lillard not leaving Portland. Yeah, nah, like, I, I don't know, man. I would love to see him go elsewhere. I mean, he, like you said, he's one of those guys that will probably stay in Portland for the rest of his career just because he's so loyal. But he's just so dominant. It's like I would just, I would be curious to see him go to a team like. I don't know, just somewhere, somewhere, somewhere else. Yeah, I just, I don't. They would need. I think he would be good on a team with like Luka Doncic. So then, like, yeah, so then, exactly. so then they could have like a primary person that is also like a like a playmaker because like Dame, like Dame's a point guard, but he's a scorer. Like yeah. he's he's a scorer over everything else. And so like, you would need to have like a wing that could be like a facilitator as well. Dude, and he's cold blooded. Yeah, he's cold blooded. Cold. I mean, uh, yeah. If, if you want to talk about someone that's really nice, Luca Doncic. Luca. Yeah, oh Luca. Dude, I love that guy. And he's, he's only like, he's like two years older than us. Bro, he's. I think he's twenty two. Yeah, so he's, he's basically 22. our age. Yeah, he's twenty two. Dude, Dude, that's why there's something to be said about not playing, like like playing overseas and getting that experience with grown men when you're like eighteen yeah. or nineteen. I mean, it's, it doesn't work out for everyone because you have to have, like, enough exposure and everything. But, I mean, if you can get the exposure and you already have competition like that under your belt, it just makes the transition to the league like, that much smoother. It, it definitely. Because I can say just from personal personal experience, being at PBI, being around, like, high-level players, high-major guards, high-level coaching, honestly, too. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, being around Coach Rello, coaches at the uh, Jordan All-American game, um, We've had we've had players coach at the uh, uh, coach at like Camp USA for like 16, 17, 18 years and stuff like that. Yeah. And so like when you have all that as a background, when you move on to your like next chapter and it's like moved up a level, it helps you so much. Yeah. So seeing him play preseason NBA games when he was sixteen against the Oklahoma City Thunder, like stuff like that, it's crazy seeing how much experience he has. That's why he's so good so young. Yeah. And I, I don't know why this is so random, but I love that he rocks that like odd number, like seventy-seven. I just yeah. love people that sport their own number, and it's just like yeah, it makes no well, sense. And like right. for, for some reason, it fits him so much. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, like and maybe because he's kind of husky, you know, he's not. Like, he's yeah, not he's a little funny. chunky. He's got a little yeah, chunk. Yeah, but he's still a bucket though. Yeah, for sure, dude. One hundred percent. Okay, now let's get into um, your basketball career. So as you said, you started, you played uh, AAU basketball for a couple of different teams, then you went to Paul the Sixth, then to Stony Brook, and now you're planted at Bucknell playing basketball there. What is your favorite basketball memory that you've made throughout your entire career so far? My favorite basketball memory, I'd say winning states my senior year. I think that, I think that's, I think that's the probably the best one because we had gone to the state championship every single year when I was in high school uh-huh. and we lost my freshman, sophomore, and junior year. 
we Damn. lost in the we, yeah we, we we lost in the state championship so finally winning the senior my my senior year and it was against O'Connell which is our rivals and oh, uh man. and it was just and it was just we absolutely beat them down too it was crazy really you guys like, busted them in the championship uh the end of the first quarter was like 26 to 6 damn let's go dude yeah like it was crazy like it was just it, it, it was just one of those games where it was just great like we all played well too like it was just great yeah now in those three games that you um came up short in the state championship were any of those against o'connell like did you get redemption against no, them no we didn't no we had my freshman year um i played like half jv half varsity mm-hmm. um, at pbi and um they beat us in the first round of the playoffs my freshman year okay um but that's the only time that they beat us in my four years when I was at PBI. True. I'm like, I'm like eight and one against them or something like that. Yeah. Nine, something like that. Did you guys get a nice ring? Yeah, we did. I was, it's somewhere around here. Yeah, it's, it's just lurking somewhere. It's lurking somewhere. Yeah, dude. I, I don't know why, but state championship rings are just so fresh. Like, I never got one in uh, in football at Stonebridge, but I mean, um, like seeing other sports get it, it's just like. I would just flex that at like the most random times out of nowhere if I had one. It's, it's huge too. It's huge. Go yeah. Ahead. It's, I was say, it's like a little Super Bowl ring, so, dude. Yeah. It's so nice too. Like we had, um, because we went 18 to 0 um, in conference. Like, like we had like 18 to 0 in conference. And it says like, oh, that's tough. It says like, I, I think it says they're like number five, like top 100 USA or something like that on the, on the ring too. I like, guess it has a whole bunch of stuff. So cool. That's clean. That's mad clean. All right. Um, what was the transfer process? New question. What was the transfer process like for you from Stony Brook to Bucknell? Uh, it was it was very very weird this year because of COVID. Yeah. Usually, um, with the because I had seen some of my teammates my freshman year, um, because I didn't tran- I transferred after my sophomore year, so I saw some of my teammates transfer my after my freshman year, and mm-hmm. I saw their process of it. And um, it's very similar to the one in high school. It's just there's just a whole bunch of coaches contacting you on the phone and then um, setting you up for visits and stuff. But because of COVID, um, we um, I can't go visit. I, I I I couldn't go visit any schools during the time that I yeah. put my name into the transfer portal. Uh, so it's it's very hard to get a feel for a school just over phone calls, um, over like FaceTime calls, um, some like PowerPoint stuff like that. It's very hard to get a feel for the school. Mm-hmm. Um, but I went with Bucknell just because they had, they had recruited me um, coming out of high school. Oh, okay. So I so I had already had a relationship with the coaching staff here because um, coming out of high school it was either I was I was choosing Stony Brook or I was choosing Bucknell. Like it was one of those two. And then it was just very fortunate that Bucknell um, had someone transfer. So I so they had so a spot team. opened up. Yeah. Nice. And you're getting uh, like I saw I saw I was doing like a little research when I was like putting together the outline. Dude, you've started, or you've you have started a lot, but you've played in a lot of games so far, like a lot of like Division One games. It said like like when I looked up like your your profile on Google, it was like he brings a veteran presence with almost like seventy Division One basketball games. And I was like, dude, that seems like so many in such a short amount of time, like two yeah. years. So that means like when you got to Stony Brook, like you were playing right away. Yeah, so um, I started my freshman year. Um, I played I played in all thirty three games. I started in 32. I didn't start the last game because uh, mm-hmm. I was, I was kind of hurt. So I was like, I, I had only practiced like two days that week. Mm-hmm. I didn't start the game, but like I started every game basically my freshman year, started about half the season um, at Stony Brook, but, but played in every game. Um, I think average, I think with both seasons, average like 30 minutes a game. That's nice. It's, yeah, and it's still 48, right? You play 12 minute quarters. No, oh, no, you played some minute halves. My bad. I'm yeah, tripping. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's a 40 minute game. I think my career high in minutes is like 38. I think. Yeah, you was probably exhausted after that game, bro. Oh my god, I was so tired. After that game. <laughs> you probably beat after that game. Um, what is like the um, like the recovery process for you guys after games? Like, if you like in a game that you play 38 minutes, what do you guys do like right after the game for like for you trying to take care of your body? Like, what do you go to? Um. Well, it's, it's different because of COVID, obviously, because usually – because now um, the way we have it is we play on Saturday, Sunday. So so, mm-hmm. so we have the whole week off so for, for less traveling. And um, – but just ice, honestly, cold cold tubs. If, like, if, if anything happens, like, I know, like, I've had some, like, elbow, like, some, like, elbow, like, tendonitis, some, like, knee tendonitis, stuff like that. 
yeah. uh, just get like just just get treatment in. Honestly, just like um, take an ibuprofen. Just like you eat. Honestly, it's also eating right. Well, you yeah. eat right too. If you if you eat right, um, your body will just feel naturally a lot better too. Mm-hmm. And Do they already have like uh, pre-installed like meal plans for you guys that they want you to follow. Or is no, it kind of not really. Um, just kind of like um, based on like what your needs. Like if you want to like be on like a weight loss type of thing, like like they will like guide you in, in a direction so you have less of a caloric intake than what you're putting out. So okay. you still, so you just burn fat like slowly throughout the season too. So then like because we have to play basketball throughout the season, so you you'll you'll be losing weight throughout the season, and then like during like the spring when we have off, that's when we like, do like cut season when we want to like bulk up. Or if you want to sit down, stuff like that. So you said that you're only playing on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, how much shorter is this season than previous seasons? My, I think we play around like 30 some games usually, but this season we only play 16. Damn. So how, what does that do for your eligibility? Like, are you given an extra year? Yeah. Yeah. So everybody's given an extra year this year. That's nice. Yeah. That's actually really nice because then you'll have a whole another year of like learning the system at Bucknell and then you'll get two more years of like actual exactly. playing yeah. time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So technically I'm a sophomore. Right? So. Yeah. But academically, like you'll graduate with your diploma with still a year to play, right? Um, there's still some things about like transferring because not all my transfer, uh, not, not, all, not all my credits transferred over. Yeah. So um, I might sense. need to take like a summer class for me to graduate on like on like in spring of 2022. But like, yeah, we'll just still, I mean, that's gonna be slight. But then, yeah, yeah, then you'll have like a, almost a full season to just focus on ball. Yeah, which is which is nice. Okay, um, uh, another question that I have for you, basketball related, is um, describe what a game day is like for you and your team. Uh, I know, like you said, this season's a little bit different because of COVID. But if you can bring us back to Stony Brook, like, yeah. what was just a normal game day like for you? Normal game days, games are at like 7.30. So um, we would have we would have shoot around at 2. We would have pregame meal at 3. Um, everybody had to be back in the building by, um, by 5 o'clock. So we usually what I would do is um, we would have shoot around from 2 to 3. I would, I would get a couple more shots up just so, just so my jump shot feels right. And then I'd go eat. Um, and then I would, then I'd like use the bathroom, take a shower, change, go to the uh, training room. And then I would like get on the boots just so like my legs are pretty warm. Yeah. Um, and then like do some stretches in the uh, training room just so I can get, just, just so I can get like, my, like my quads and my glutes activated just so I can like release some pressure off my knee mm-hmm. stuff like that. And then, um, usually, usually walk out onto the court with like 80 ish, 70 minutes, and then just go through like form shooting, mid range, uh, mid range off the uh, off the bounce, and then threes, and then threes off the bounce. Nice. And then and then usually that's when we start doing like our team stuff, and then yeah. And Dude, then it's sometimes game. warming up. I mean, obviously, I don't play like, a sport in college, but like warming up is sometimes like the the most fun thing because it's just like you're just lost, like listening to music and just like getting your mind right for the game. No, like the like the last ten minutes of warm ups is the best when like everybody's in the crowd and stuff. And you're and then like that's when you're just doing your like layup lines to like finish it off. Yeah, that's the best because like, especially when your knees are feeling good that day, like you be trying like like you be doing all the dunks you can do and stuff. Yeah, like yeah, we've had so many of those days where like I like everybody's knees are feeling good, so then everybody's like doing cool dunks and like warm ups, and we're all getting hype. And then those games are the best. I love those. Yeah, what's the what's the craziest dunk that you can do? Um, I mean, I've done it East Bay before, like, like, uh, put it in between my legs. Yeah. Um, I've done like a reverse windmill. Damn. Um, as a point guard, that's impressive, bro. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Honestly, bro, I'm old. My knees, my knees can yeah. handle all this. All like, I don't be jumping that much anymore. In high school, when I had good knees, oh man, I used to, I used to dunk all the time. Now, now I do. Now I'll be relaxing a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Can you actually remember uh it's, it's okay if you can't, but the first time that you dunked in a game? My first the first time I dunked in a game. Well, if you want to count like a game game, that was like sometime in my junior year. I don't I don't remember what game that was, but my first time ever dunking like live, like in like actually playing basketball was yeah. I was 16 during the summer. I was 16 during the summer of going into my junior year. And we were just doing like workouts at my school and we were playing like pickup. And then I just remember um, 
there's like a transition and I was just like, I'm gonna just go for it. And I went for just my- rose up. Yeah, I just rose up and I got my first dunk. And then after after that one dunk, I'm telling you, after that one dunk, like dunking just became so much easier. After after I actually did it one time, like I started dunking two hands, like I started doing everything. Yeah, dude, that's my dream, bro. Before I die, I gotta be able to boom it at least once. <laughs> bro, I'm telling how tall are you? Like six feet. Six foot? No, yeah. If you if you literally just work on legs for four months, you'll, yeah. you'll probably get there. I think, yeah, I should, like you said, I just need to work on like explosiveness. Now, do you have any like recommendations for people that are listening out here that want to be able to dunk? Like, what is one drill that you've done that you could that can help us? Um, I'd say do do a lot of stuff that has like explosion, but like do it with resistance. So like, because I know like um I have like a like I'm I don't have, but I've had access to uh to a vertimax mm-hmm. but like i've done a whole bunch of exercises that are just like the vertimax it's just it's just like jumping with resistance that's all it is so like if you if you do like quick jumping exercises but you have resistance if it's like ankle weights maybe if you want to add some weight in your hands or something like that like if you just have some some resistance you want to do it at home stuff like that and honestly yeah. if you just keep on stretching because like the once you start dunking a lot, or if you try to start dunking a lot, like jumping, your knees are gonna start killing you. So you need to you need to start stretching and make sure all all parts of your legs are activated. And that also make you bounce a lot better too. Yeah. Well, hopefully next time we talk, <laughs> we'll have dunked by then. That's hopefully, the man. Hopefully I can. Hopefully when I come home, we can play Lifetime or something. Yeah, dude. I would love to hoop together. I would love that. That would be sick. Yeah, all right. Sure. Um, is that where you go? You play at Lifetime? Uh, I've been playing there sometimes because my friend, my friend's whole family has, has a membership. And so like, they can just like get me in. Yeah. Somehow. I don't, I don't really know how it works. But I just signed something. I don't need it. So I've been playing there. That's what's um, up. Play like one life sometimes, but um, I'd be going to, I'd be going to like these like private runs um, out in Maryland whenever I'm at home, like during the summer. Yeah. Um, I'd be going there usually, but like, that's all at like night. That's, yeah. that's like nighttime. And then like on like, early sunday but like during the week during the day like i just be like hooping outside honestly like yeah near, near um near indy near near indy there are like some like nice courts that everyone's at true so like, yeah dude we're at some point we're gonna have to get the flex boys together like nathan bro, james true. kevin bro james i was with james so much this summer like, really we, yeah yeah we all gotta be together yeah. yeah dude for sure we're gonna have to kick it and play ball together okay um now i just got two random questions for you before we wrap this up First one is what is your favorite restaurant and or meal to eat right after a game? Right after a game? Yeah. If you if you're feeling it. I mean, if you feel like dog and some food. Um at Stony Brook, there's this place called DP Doe. Okay. And they and they sell calzones. Oh sheesh. There's that I've seen one. I've seen one in Blacksburg. I've seen I've seen a DP Doe in Blacksburg. Um and they had this thing. It's called it, it's called the mac and pork. So it's a it's mac and cheese and barbecue pulled pork in a calzone. And it's probably the best thing I've ever had in my life. Okay, dude, I'm actually gonna clip this and I'm gonna go to Blacksburg in the next <laughs> week and I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna take that straight <laughs> order. And I'm gonna let you know how it is because if they have one in Blacksburg, bro, I'm gonna have to try that because that sounds ridiculous. Bro, I and like it was right off of campus. Like I literally and like I used to drive two minutes and then Damn. get there and then it, w- it would be ready in 10 minutes and they also had a deal on like tuesdays or something where like you could get <laughs> two calzones for like ten dollars or something so i used to get Damn, and they're bro. huge they're like they're they're like this big so like i used to get two mac and pork calzones for, like, dude that sounds bucks. that sounds lethal wow they're so good i used to crush them after games dude i swear like college campuses have like the most unique restaurants that slap like, yeah, I swear. Like, just there's just so many. Uh, yeah, like there's so many places. Um, like in Radford and Blacksburg, because like Blacksburg's like 20 minutes down the road, so I'm always hanging out at Tech with people, and there'll just be restaurants that I've never heard of that we go to, and it's delicious. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, dude, why can't we have this back in Nova? Like, why can't we just make one right, right quick? But uh, no, I'm trying this, that out, Miles. I'm telling you right great, now, I'm trying that. Bro, all this great food in like Southern Virginia, it just it just won't go up to Northern Virginia. I, I know. It's got to make its way up there, dude. We got to petition for it or something. Hey, we I mean, have like one Zaxby's around us. We're we're getting there. Yeah, we need a cookout. Do you have a cookout in Bucknell? No, we don't. Yeah. I had I had a Sonic at Stony Brook. That's just as good. Uh, yeah, Sonic was. Oh my god, that was so good too. Slushies, 
Dude, they, bro, because like for basketball, like I have to be here for like the summer, mm-hmm. uh, because like because like we do stuff, uh, we do stuff as a team over the summer. So like I had to be at Stony like for the summer. So like summer nights with the with the Sonic slushy bro. Oh my god, so nice. Yeah, dude. They I've spent so much money because there's a Sonic like a mile down the road. I might go there after this. I mean, I, there's a there's a good chance I might actually. And I'm pretty damn hungry now that we say it. Okay. Um, one of the last questions that I have for you is, um, what are your top three music artists of all time? And it could be like. You could have one rap. Man, you could have one. I'm old. Yeah, yeah. Or you can say right now. I don't care. Just, just uh, let everyone know three artists that you think are, are uh, your favorites. Lil Uzi. Okay, I like that. I'd say Lil Uzi is my number one. I'd say, oh, man. I'd say like Brent Fires is my number two. All right. And three, I don't three. See, like those two are like always like those those two are like always up there. But like the third is like always up in the air. It's just like who I'm listening to at the time. Yeah. But like always right now, like right now, I've just been listening to a lot of um, Mamba Chino. Um, he's out of Philly. He's really small. He has a song called Billy Three. It's like one of the best songs I've ever heard. It might be like song yeah. of the year for me. It was like, and, and like the yeah, I'll have to check that out, dude. Yeah, that song is so good too. Um, but I've been listening to, um, like Lil Durk recently, I've been listening to a lot of Durk. Um, all right. For my all time top three, I'll say Lil Uzi Vert. I'll say Brent Fias. And I didn't say him, but for number three, I'll put Young Pinch. Young Pinch will always be like. Young my, Pinch. Yeah. Cause like, he's like, he's like, he's a Cali boy. He has those Cali vibes. Uh-huh. And I feel like I feel like I'm like a Cali boy. You have Cali vibes, 100. Yeah, percent You I definitely got some Cali vibes in you. I just, I'd be connected. With that. <laughs> are, are you, you're not from Cali, though, are you? No, nah, I'm born and raised in Virginia. Okay, you you visited though, right? Yeah, yeah. I will. Um, it was for basketball though. We was out in LA. I loved it out there. Yeah, I love it too. I mean, I've only been once and it was uh, like two summers ago or last summer. It's just nothing like it. I mean, I feel like it's like you're entering into like a different world. No, there's nothing like Spain. That's what I'm telling you. Spain, okay. Spain yeah. is on a different level. Oh, my goodness, bro. Spain was amazing. I that's that. that's one of the top two places that I want to travel is Spain yeah. is one of them. Uh, it was I was I was super fortunate. We had our uh, we had a Euro, we had our European tour in the summer of 2019. Mm-hmm. So we got to play. Uh, we got to play at Barcelona, Valencia, and Paris. Damn, bro! So you're lucky for that, man. That's some good experiences. Uh, oh my, it was it was one of the greatest experiences I've ever had in my life. I was so thankful for it. Yeah, like being in awesome. Spain, Barcelona. Oh my, I love that city so much. Barcelona, yeah. is great. How long were you there for? Uh, ten days. Okay. Yeah, played played three games in ten days. But it was so nice. Like our coaches didn't make us practice. Like we literally just showed up to the game. And Damn. That's and but like, but like we were hooping though. Like we were playing against like against like uh like second league pro teams, and we were beating them. Like damn. damn. And this is for your AAU team? No, this is for college. This was. This oh, this was, is for. Yeah, this was 2019. This was last two summers ago. That's crazy. Two summers ago. Yeah, dude, time flies. I swear. Time flies. Especially as we get older, I feel like time just go by goes by even faster. Time goes by so fast. I feel like time's so slow. Like when I'm in it, but time be flying. Like like my 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 days feel so long because they're so because they're just so repetitive. Yeah. Just because of season. Just because like you wake up, especially during winter break when 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 no one was here, it'd be like wake up, have have a morning workout. Um, then have practice and then have something after practice and then like you do nothing else for the rest of the day. So it was just like, it's just repetitive. But. Yeah. I love having a schedule though. It just keeps me busy. I mean, like, yeah, yeah just knowing exactly like what I'm going to do in a given day. But yeah, like, like you said, when you live in the moment, it's just like, it feels like it's just, you don't really realize how fast it's going by, but then when you break it down and you're like, high school was three years ago or like we're coming up on three years ago. It's like, well, she's dude. Like that's, that's I know. crazy to hear. It's crazy to hear yeah. how I graduated three like almost three years ago ago. yeah like when we got to college and um you know like all the paperwork and everything says class of 2022 i'm like like bro like that's 2022 like that didn't even sound like a year like that sounds so far away and now it's 2021 and i'm like 2021 it's crazy 
I'd be like, I'd really be saying 2021 and not realizing that's 20, like 2021. Yeah, I say, like, I still feel like it's 2020. I still yeah. feel like it's 2020. I, Bro, still. I feel like it's like 2017 sometimes. I'm like, I'd be saying years and they just, I don't even realize what year we're actually living in. But um, all right, uh, before we wrap up, if you can off the top of your head, what is one piece of advice that you have for young basketball players that are listening or watching right now? Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. That's the first thing I would say is believe in yourself. Because if you don't believe in yourself, like no one else will. Like I'm telling you, deep down, you best you have to believe that you will be the best that you can be. Like you you have to believe that. Cause I know for me, because I know I've 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 gone through it. I've gone through it a lot of times. Like my confidence has gone up and down in terms of basketball. And you see, like I'm a I'm a division one basketball player and my confidence goes up and down. Mm-hmm. So if you're just a, if you're just a normal kid, you're like 13 years old, and you really and you love basketball and you're just struggling with it, like believe in yourself and get just get in the gym. Honestly, if you if you believe in yourself and you truly love it and you work hard every day, like if you do whatever you need to do every day to get better, like if you if you if you can't dribble that well, just start off by just doing literally 10 minutes a day. Just for one week, do 10 minutes of ball handling a day. And then for week two, do 20 minutes. And then mm-hmm. week three, do 30 minutes. And then next thing you know, and in, in, in a month, you have you have the ball on strength. Yeah. Like, it, it just, it's just progression. Because it's all, for basketball, it's all just practice and, and just – and just repetition. That's yeah, all. I feel like uh, one thing that people don't realize, and not necessarily just for basketball, but like in any aspect of life, is like great things like take a lot of time and like a lot of work. Great like take a lot of time. Like nobody, everybody sees the end product, and nobody sees the whole journey. Exactly. So a I mean, of- you you just got to be grinding, like you said, every single day, and then constantly up the workload and yeah. better yourself that yeah. way. Yeah. That's you great advice, man. Yeah, you can't you can't you can't lose sight of 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 the end goal because of like some some inconveniences that are that are right in front of you exactly like, yeah. like it's an obstacle it's like you have to go around it. like eventually you have to go around it because you get paid because you have to keep on moving forward yeah just got to do dude this is a this is a great episode man i'm really happy we did it we were able Bro, to squeeze it in it. yeah this is my first ever podcast or anything like this like, this is great i love yeah it. for sure dude i'll be i'd love to have you back on at the end of the season we can recap how you did and everything i actually have a question for you all right, let's hear it. Uh, how'd you get how'd you get into this whole podcast thing? Like, like what made you want to decide, like, you know what, I'm gonna start my own podcast? So that's uh that's a good question. Um, I've always wanted to like make content in like some way, shape, or form, but I was just like I didn't know like how to get started, and I've never really been into like like fo- like having a camera in front of me at all times and like vlogging my day and everything, but I've always been like passionate about like like watching YouTube and everything. So when I got to college I was like, okay, I feel like this is the last four years where I can like actually like make a platform and like grow it with, like while still having like friends and a support cast and everything. But again, I just didn't know where to get started or anything. And then I was in uh, one of my comms classes because I'm minoring in comms. Mm-hmm. And uh, a couple kids came from the radio club and they were uh, preaching about um, like the radio club at Radford. And they were like, hey, uh, anyone that's interested, just talk to us after class. We'll give you information. Come out to our first interest meeting next week. So I went up to the kid after class and I was like, hey, I have no clue what this club is. But I mean, radio seems pretty cool. I like to talk. So uh, can I come to your interest meeting? He was like, yeah, sure. I went to the interest meeting. I met everyone. And then at our first like actual meeting after the interest meeting, they saw like how comfortable I was like talking with everyone. And they approached me and was like, do you want to uh, start a podcast for us? Like we have a few podcast slots that are opened up and uh, we'd love for you to make one. And uh, I, I started it like the next week, but I didn't start posting content until like six months after I, I recorded. And mm-hmm. then uh, COVID started. I went back home. I didn't, I wasn't able to record in the studio here. So I bought my own equipment, which is like this and a couple of lights and everything. And I just started grinding. I was just like, how can, like, who can I interview? When can we do it? it a lot of them were in person and I just started doing them through Zoom a couple of weeks ago. But um, I don't know. I just feel like I, I'm surrounded by so many great people and like so many great friends and like friends that I haven't talked to in a while, like you. But I mean, like, you're a great person. You have a great story. You're very driven. So it's just like, I just want to have, documented conversations with, with, with people like you and uh, a bunch of other like great people in my life um, just so I can like look back on it and everything. And now it's just become a grind where it's just like, I'm like more motivated than ever to just keep doing this. Oh, so. yeah. No, cause, because I had, because um, I had been thinking about it too. Cause like, I was thinking about like, I had, I had the same thought as you, like, I kind of want to like do entertainment 
some some sort of way, like after basketball, maybe somehow. I don't know. But, yeah. Um, so yeah, I've been feeling the same way. I, I just I, I just don't know what I want to get into. Yet. Exactly. That's the hardest thing to find. But if you like a big uh, tip of advice that I give to anyone like watching or listening that's in the same boat that we were in is just get after it. Like just right away, like, 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 don't like, like think you need to like put this off or this area of your life needs to be good or you need this specific camera or you need this many followers on Instagram before you get started. Just get after it and just make it as soon as possible. And I'd love to help you get started. If you wanted to make a podcast or if you wanted to make a YouTube channel, you didn't know where to get started. I would love to help you out. Cause yeah, I might, I'm, I might actually talk to you about that. Yeah, for I, sure. I, dude. I, I really thought about starting a pod, like not maybe a podcast, but like I really want to do start a YouTube channel. Yeah. Something like that. Maybe. I mean, dude, you'd be able to give people like such a different, uh, like inside look to like division one basketball, you could yeah. do like day in the lives. You could do like this at Bucknell, like, like, you know what I mean? There's just so many different things that you could go in the, like, the access you have at your school. And I mean, the people that you've met and played with and everything is, it would definitely, I would support the hell out of it if you did something like that. And I'd yeah, be more I'll than happy to help you out. Try Something. Cause like, I like, I like, I like blew up a couple of times on TikTok, and then like a couple, a couple of people were asking me like, "Do you want to do something on social media?" And I was like, "I don't know." Yeah, dude, TikTok people are blowing up on TikTok for for no reason. Like, I'll come across like uh, a kid on my like for you page, it's just like doing some dumb stuff, and it's got like six million likes, and I'm like, "Jeez!" Like, I mean, good for you. I mean, I'm not like hating on it. I'm just saying, like, no, no, yeah, no. It's just crazy that like that many people are like into those like certain certain things. Yeah, yeah, it's just crazy how many. How, how many people are on TikTok just in general? I swear, I be on my forty page and I like every five videos has a million likes. Yeah, dude, TikTok. I, like I slept on it for a while, and then like probably like seven or eight months ago is when I started like actually going on the app daily. And now it's like every night before bed, I'm on it for like thirty minutes. Bro, my friend um, from college, from Stony, uh, he was he was one of our managers. Um, he and I are super close. He, he and I used to always joke around and like in the warmups and stuff. Mm -hmm. um he just started posting tiktoks um and then like uh he and his girlfriend moved in together they're in quarantine and bro he has like 600k now yeah dude the couples tiktok some of those videos blow up bro he has like one of one of his last videos has like 7 million views or something like that like he's blowing up like it's crazy seeing him like he'd be talking to me about it and like he told me to like start grinding on tiktok he told me he was like bro if you start doing like anything on like basketball related on tiktok like i think you'd make it and i was like damn that's what that's what really made me want to like start thinking about like doing entertainment stuff. yeah dude, you definitely should i mean and also it's not like terribly time consuming like, obviously like you're busy and basketball is your your first priority or, or school and that basketball whichever one you want to say but you would definitely have time to to pump out some good content for tiktok yeah i was just thinking man. i was thinking because like i don't know I just want to make cool videos because like yeah, I, dude, I love like I love videography and just like I just don't have enough time to like really dive into like in, yeah. into it like how I see it as like a passion. Yeah, and it's perfect. I mean, at the start of the episode, we were talking about your uh, your laptop. I mean, the the laptop that you have now is like the same one that I have. It is perfect for editing videos and everything. Like, I I yeah. swear, there's not a better laptop than uh, Apple yeah. for as far as like videography. Yeah, I have I have a little bit of experience with. Um, uh, with, uh, with Premiere Pro. Okay. Um, I made, I made like a travel video a couple of summers ago. Yeah. Some, say, a lot of them is you just mess around with the, with the different, uh, like editing softwares yeah. and then you, you pick it up pretty damn fast. I mean, after a couple yeah. videos. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. I was just, ever since like, ever since videotaping and stuff younger, like I used to be with like Tyler Toomey and like, uh, like, um, uh, Aaron Castile. I used to be with, like all of them and like record them like clip jumping and stuff. Yeah. See, that's a type. It, it, like you said, it's, it's cool to look back on. I mean, to like have like a library, like a fat library of videos you can go back on. Okay. Um, but is there anything else you got to say? I mean, this is a great episode. I loved having yeah, you on, man. I, I appreciate you having me on. Like, I really appreciate it. Like I've been, I told you the thing about podcasts and stuff. So it is great to come on here. Yeah, dude, it was a pleasure having you on. And yeah, uh, everyone, it was, bro, it was great talking to you. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're good, bro. It was great talking to you because, like, I haven't talked to you in so long, but like, I saw that you had this podcast. And I was like, bro, like, I have to support him on this. Like, bro, this is so tough. Like, I appreciate tough. you for saying that, dude. And it, it is great to just like talk to you and like, I mean, obviously we're not in person, but I mean, seeing yeah. you and just like reading about you last night as far as like Bucknell and Stony Brook like I'm, I'm excited to, to watch your games like from now on you know what I mean I'm gonna be turn, tuning in you guys uh playing on was it Saturday next game yeah Saturday yeah dude, I'll definitely be tuning in man it's good it's good catching up with you bro yeah it was great catching up with you. 
Yeah. And we got to link, like you said, we got to link this summer and play ball. I mean, you'll probably oh. break my ankles, but it's oh. all right. It's all good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I'm home, bro, for sure. That's what's up, dude. All right. Uh, everyone, top of the description. Follow Miles on Instagram at miles.latimer. Did I get that right? Yeah. That's your Instagram. All right. And then below that will be um, my social medias. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share the video with your friends and family. Uh, but as far as uh, the episode, I mean, this was episode 44, Monday, February 1st, 2021. My guest was Miles Latimer. I'm the host of this show, Michael Marr. Any final words for everyone listening? Stay safe. Stay safe. Yeah. Stay clean, stay safe and stay tuned. All right, guys. I'll see you next week.